Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here with Dyer Supplier to talk to you about safety while dyeing yarn with commercial acid dyes. About a decade ago, I started my yarn dyeing adventuring with food coloring. I ran to the store, grabbed some Kool-Aid packets, and the rest is history. But over the years, I've started to transition more and more to using commercial acid dyes. Because unlike food coloring, which is developed with food safety in mind, commercial acid dyes are developed for dyeing fiber. And so you can get better light fastness and wash fastness by using commercial dyes on your wool yarn. I was nervous to go to commercial dyes because there are some additional safety steps you have to take. However, once I did some additional research, I realized that these additional steps are quite simple, um, and I'm going to go through them with you today. Whenever you are going to start playing around with a new dye or any new chemicals really, it is worth checking out the manufacturer instructions and seeing what they recommend. Jacquard advises that their acid dyes may be harmful if inhaled and can be irritating to the eyes. So they recommend that you wear a mask and wear eye protection whenever dealing with the dye powders. And of course, you should always make sure that all of the equipment that you use is dedicated dye equipment, not used for food. And you should store the dyes and dye stocks away from children and pets. And not just acid dyes. If I am dealing with any other powders, uh, I try to wear a mask because I don't want to inhale or irritate my uh, lungs in any way. For many people, the acid in acid dyes can feel intimidating, but that really just refers to the fact that in addition to the dye, you need to have an acid source so that way you can permanently dye your yarn. And for that acid, you will use either acetic acid, which is just white vinegar, or you might use citric acid, which you can find as a powder in many canning sections of stores. If you're dyeing yarn in your kitchen like me, you want to make sure that you clear your work surface, remove food and any items used for food uh, before you start dyeing. And then once you finish up, I make sure to wipe down and clean every surface so that way I can start using my kitchen as a kitchen again. I like to protect my work surface with a shower curtain liner. That way any drips or spills can just be easily wiped off. I won't stain my counter and it makes the final cleanup a lot easier. When I am done, I always wash down the surface of this shower curtain liner, and then I go and wash my kitchen counter as well. Anytime I am playing with acid dye powder, I will be wearing a respirator mask, safety goggles, and nitrile gloves as personal safety equipment. This helps you prevent staining your skin with the dyes, accidentally inhaling any powders, or and protects your eyes from getting anything in your eyes. At minimum, you want at least some kind of face mask to create a barrier so you don't inhale any powders. Working with the mask can be a little cumbersome and some people I know find it claustrophobic. Uh, this is one reason why a lot of dyers prefer to pre-mix stock solutions. That way um, you can have them on hand to play with color without having to go into the powders each time you want to dye yarn. Let's talk about the dye location. I'm a home dyer, so I dye my yarn in my kitchen and I make sure that I have a clear work surface away from food, um, but I transition this from a dye kitchen back to a food kitchen multiple times. And this is something that I am comfortable with, but many people aren't comfortable with that and that is absolutely okay as well. A lot of people will set up a dye station in a garage um, or do a lot of the mixing and dyeing outside. Uh, portable hot plates are a really great way to move your kitchen outside so you can have fun playing with color. For a heat source, I use my gas stove top. Uh, I feature this in many of my videos, and that is my preferred way to heat the yarn. I don't have a dedicated dye microwave, and personally, I don't want to put uh, commercial acid dyes, non-food safe dyes, into my microwave. 
this is my personal preference. I know some people make other choices, but my microwave is a built-in. It's harder for me to wipe down and clean, and so I would rather not deal with any dye splatters getting all over it, and I can keep things better controlled around the stovetop. I know for me, one of the things that made me the most nervous about playing with acid dyes was dealing with the powders. I was afraid of inhalation, of making a mess. Thankfully, I found that when dealing with the powders, they don't really spread that far. Wiping down area outside of where I'm working and on the floor doesn't show any stray dye particles. Um, but it's always worth checking so that way you know for your own comfort level. When I started, I didn't play around with the powders very much at all. I made a lot of dye stocks and then worked directly from those because I was much more comfortable dealing with a dye in liquid form. I know some people like to mix their dye stocks outside and that is also perfectly fine. Ultimately, it comes down to your personal comfort level. Take my recommendations to card recommendations and then decide if you want to have additional safety precautions as well. Here are my big safety takeaways. Make sure you're using dedicated dye equipment and you don't use things you use for dyeing with commercial dyes for food. Wear safety equipment when you're dealing with powders, masks, goggles, gotta protect those airways and your eyes. And three, use some common sense. Make sure you're working in a clean area, clean up after yourself, and keep these dye powders away from kids and pets. And really, that's ultimately what you need to know, and you can go start having fun dyeing yarn with commercial acid dyes at home. If you've already been playing around with food coloring at home, the techniques that you have learned translate really nicely to commercial acid dyes. Uh, the dyes bind to the yarn in a very similar way, and so a lot of what you've already learned will really translate. The most important part of all of this is to have fun. Dyeing is an adventure, and it's just another way to customize your knitting, crocheting, weaving, whatever fiber arts you love. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you would like to see more of my journey from starting with food coloring and going to commercial dyes, check out the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And as you're getting started on your journey, head over to dyersupplier.com to check out their bear yarn. They offer many different yarn bases that are affordable, ethically sourced, and you can find a variety of fiber types and yarn weights, and so you can get the perfect yarn for the project. All you have to do is add color. Speaking of color, you can find all 40 Jacquard Acid Dye colors on the Dyer Supplier website as well. Don't get intimidated. You don't need 40 colors. Start with the primaries and play around with some mixing. I personally enjoy playing with a lot of pre-mixed colors, but it is also fun to get that exact shade that you want by playing with some color mixing. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.